Once more, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so I'm Goddess Pretty Akasha, and I run the Black Polyandry page. I made it a couple of uh, months ago in March, basically, and it just blew up. And I am now basically the, uh, you know, creator of the Black Polyandry movement. So that's pretty much what I advocate, and I try to help people, um, you know, with coming into their true selves and living their life openly and honestly. And I do a lot of coaching behind the scenes as well. So, yeah. That is so amazing. So basically, like, you are one of the people that's really spearheading the polyandrous movement right now. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> that is, wait, so how did you, wait, okay, okay, okay. We got so much. How did you first realize that you were polyandrous? Um, I always knew that I was different than everyone else. When I was growing up, I just knew that I was different. So even 18, coming into my first relationship, I never had a monogamous mindset. I didn't know what it was called at the time. Hmm. You so know, you were never, so, like, monogamy just never appealed to you? No. No, no, no. And and it never it never worked for me. Um and sharing was just it just came kind of natural because I'm a Libra. I love to love people, you know, and you know, it just came naturally. So I didn't like the whole monogamy, you're my possession, you know, you gotta be everything to me. That didn't work for me. So exactly. yeah, I kind of realized it a long time ago. I just didn't know what it was called. And I was just living it. And, you know, getting all the scrutiny and eyes and looks and all that stuff, you know, from regular public. But I didn't know what I was doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, there was no language, like, at that time to really. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, at least in the mainstream. So. Right, right. I want you to answer. Can you answer a stupid question really quick? You know there's <laughs> plenty of them. Yeah. Of course. Okay, okay, okay. So we got to talk about the alpha male thing, right? Of course. This is a question. This always comes up. How? I don't mm -hmm. think two alphas are going to go for that. Oh, no. Like, it's going to have to be betas. It's going to have to be undesirable men. Like, what do you think? Like, how do you rebut people that say things like that? Honestly, I basically just tell them that they don't even know what an alpha means. You know, <laughs> if they were to truly look it up alpha the term itself originated from people describing um the leader in a pack of wolf a pack of animals so if you're looking at a pack of animals the the leader of the tribe is basically the alpha it doesn't mean that he cannot share because if you look at it, a lot of animals are um po polyamorous polygamous they had they mate with each other you know what i'm trying to say um mm -hmm. he's just the one that protects everyone and looks out for everyone he's the biggest and the strongest that's what makes him alpha so everyone who tries to deem themselves as alpha is pretty much an ego thing of them <laughs> trying to make themselves feel good about you know they would like to consider themselves you know big and strong you know mm -hmm. i'm this i'm that but usually a true leader doesn't have to you know tell everyone i'm a leader a lion doesn't have to say i'm a lion like you know what i'm trying <laughs> like, to say you, are, I'm a lion. Are, you know <laughs> yeah yeah so, like, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of the most ridiculous questions but people constantly ask that so basically you're saying right. like being alpha doesn't have to do with being sexually possessive or demanding right, it monogamy it doesn't at all Be people um they tend to not understand the, you know, just being the leader of something. To be the leader of something doesn't mean you have to be in control of something. Mm. Um, you know, you just are in a position where people trust you to guide them. That's what being a leader is. So you, that means you have to be a, the type of person that gains people's trust. Yes. You know? You can't be dominating, you can't be controlling, you can't be possessive, you know, because then no one will trust you and you're forcing that position on upon yourself. Mm. Rather than it being you know? ordained by the people. Exactly. And that's how leadership should be. The people should, you know, come to you and make you that. 
because yeah. that's who you are. That's the characteristics that you possess. Mm. And I think that's so true because so often people think that leadership has to do with coercion or force or, yeah, I can dominate you and make you do what I want. Like, no, that's not what true leadership or effective leadership is about. Right, right. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you find in the polyamorous community that you get a lot of flack for your dynamic and for your beliefs? Of course, <laughs> all the time, <laughs> all the time, you know, it's coming from both men and women. Mm. Uh, you know, the women will look at you and say, well, they will speak in a more condescending tone and say, well, I couldn't do that. You know, I, you know, respect my body and I can only have, you know, it's, it's a particular mindset that people have, um, a lot of conditioning that people have, they're not yet, you know, to get rid of. Mm. So the men, they definitely come in and say, well, you know, you're, you know, you're a slut, you're a hoe, you know, oh, God. you know, you know, you, you just recently did a video about slut shaming, you know, you I already know. know what they think. <laughs> I know, I'm over, ah, I, I'm just so, yeah. Cool. But what's interesting is, so you get a lot of flack from women too, in the poly community. Yes, women in the poly community, yes. Wow, like you wouldn't think because, that. because a lot of women, especially if they're polygynous women, you know, I'm trying to say not polyamorous women who are open or they're into relationship anarchy, not those women, but the women who are into polygyny and they feel that that is the best thing for the black community um, to thrive and to grow. You know, they tend to think that their dynamic is the absolute best for everyone and everyone should do that. And whenever they see a woman who wants multiple men, they kind of you know, perceive it as, you know, I can't have that many energies in my temple, you know, right. and it's kind of like a condescending tone when they're talking to you about it, saying, oh, I can't, but you do you, ma, like, you know. Yeah, and that's not true mm -hmm. understanding or acceptance. Mm -hmm. What's funny to me, I, I like to call them polygyny pimps, because most, <laughs> most, most of them, they out, what they're doing out here is far from ethical. It's it's far from mm -hmm. for the community. And mm -hmm. I want to ask you this. And so personally, I when people start talking all this community building talk, like obviously I want what's best for the black community, but I also feel that a person should have autonomy to have a relationship that makes them happy. Like there has right. to be a balance Absolutely. between being righteous and being true to self. But, Absolutely. I want to ask you, like, do you think that polyandry can benefit the Black community? And if so, like, tell me how. Um, I definitely think polyandry can benefit the Black community. Do I feel everyone is capable of doing it? No. Do, am I unrealistic in thinking everyone should do it? No. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think that if we were to practice it, practice it in a you know, on a mass quantity, you know, we would have a lot, you know, more safe children, mm. more protected women, mm. you know, we would be able to um, pull our resources together and, you know, try to get land and rebuild our, you know, if people want to put businesses together, whatever they want to do, we will start to focus on stability and we won't tend to have a victim mindset of, oh, I can't get a job, oh, I can't take care of my family. Those kind of things won't be the norm anymore. Mm. So it's like, also, not only that, just having multiple men in the home, it promotes unity, brotherhood. You know, the children grow up seeing Black men loving each other, so they tend, they may not be so inclined to go into gang gang life <laughs> so yeah. it's a lot of things you know um if if one man decides he wants to get out of line and hit on the woman there's another man right there to stop him in his tracks because usually yes. when domestic violence happens it's only it usually happens in the privacy of the home and it's only that man and that woman there's mm. no one there to stop him no one dares to step to him no one's going to do anything you know what i'm trying to say so i think it can definitely reduce the amount of domestic violence rates in the black community protecting our children you know, if one man's at work, another man can be with the child at the park. So the child's never out by themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So I just see it as it's 
very, very beneficial. I, and I agree with you. Like everything you said, like makes total sense to me. And what's funny to me is that the people that argue for polygyny and, oh, there will be multiple female energies in the home are the same mm -hmm. people that say that the Black woman destroyed the Black community by being a single mom. The Black mother was never absent. That female energy was never absent. It was right. the male energy that has been absent in these families and in these homes for so long. So like, that's like a crazy conclusion to draw to me. But like what I want right. to ask you is, if you had to put polygyny and polyandry up against each other, you believe polyandry is best like for the community. Most definitely, most definitely because the reason being is because when you think about life in America, I can't speak for the rest of the world. I can just mm -hmm. speak about America, police brutality, systematic racism, all types of things that we're dealing with. And in order to destroy a nation, the first thing they do is go straight to our protection barrier. And our protection is our men. So that's mm -hmm. why they take the men out of the homes, separate the family, and then put us against each other. They, they put our men in jails they kill them in the streets whatever this is what they do to our men and then our women build up this defense mechanism and become independent and now we don't need men anymore and you know now we're taking care of our children on our own mm -hmm. our children are growing up without fathers you know trauma all types of things is happening just because the men aren't there so imagine if that happens with a polygynous family if all of us decided to be polygynous and there's only one man in the home with a bunch of women now there's a bunch of women and a bunch of children because he may get them pregnant all at once mm -hmm. that are now unprotected if something was to happen to that one man in that house he's yes. not able to protect his family in the way that he should you know he's spreading himself thin in his capabilities yes. of being able to provide and protect in a system that makes it hard for him to provide and to protect. So mm. what I'm focusing on is making sure that men come together because what, what makes us weak as a nation is our individuality, our individualistic mindset. So we need to come together, unify, and that brotherhood is what's going to create our strength as a whole. And then we can worry about if, if even if they were to take out one man out of the home, there's still another one there. So if something was to happen to, you know, one guy, he is comfortable knowing, even if he goes to jail, he's comfortable knowing that there's, you know, his brother is at home taking care of his wife and children. Yes. And you just raised like such an interesting point, because I think that's something that people don't think about a lot with polygyny. Like you have these multiple women all these children because we're building kingdoms right and yes. um then something happens to you who is going to take all of that on like who is going to want to take all that on you have all of this that you have sole responsibility for mm -hmm. and now you're gone and it's like okay basically it just ends up being the same cycle of the single black mother Yes. And then, and then it becomes, you know, they may look at it as, uh, you know, better because then the mother won't necessarily be single because she'll have a sister there with her. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing about that is once you you basically are changing the environment of the woman to make her less of a great mother to the child, because now she has mm -hmm. to go out and do your job. She has to go out and work and deal with this system and stress and all this other stuff. And an absent mother is just as bad as an absent father. So if she's out at work all the time, you know, I'm trying to say there's yeah. less women in the home to nurture the child. Homeschooling, you know, now she has to put her child in school, you know, to get indoctrination and become yeah. the perfect citizen for the United States of America. So, yeah. you know, it's just a lot of things you have to really just think about it, open up your mind a little bit. And just because there's two mothers and a child or two mothers and two children, the mothers need protection just as much as the children do. You know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. And I mean, I think that these are things that are never really thought about. Like, why do you think polygyny has caught fire as it has <laughs> in the Black community? Like, everybody, oh, polygyny, polygyny. Why do you think that is? It, because we, as a nation, 
um, grew up in a patriarchal society. Mm. So basically, you know, it's a man's world. You know, women are even all the religions that we take on, even if we get rid of, you know, Christianity, you know, even other religions, the woman is still subservient to the man. So when it comes to the men, their fantasy is, you know, having multiple women, threesomes, even young boys grow up and their fathers promote that they go out there and get girls, whereas young girls are held back from you know, dating boys and, you know, you know, it's, it's just yeah. we grow up different. It's, it's how we were raised. So when it comes to polygyny, it kind of comes off as natural or the way it's supposed to be, you know? So that's why when it comes to women having multiple men, it's like, oh, that's blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, people, I hate when people like start talking about, oh, what's natural and the way that it's meant to be and oh, what feels right. Like, it's like people do not take into account how serious socialization is and mm -hmm. how you're brought up and the images that you see and all of these different things. Like we would like to believe that, oh, I have my own mind, I'm thinking for myself, but there are things that are ingrained in us and we truly are right. programmed as children absolutely. by our family, by the media, everything. Right, right, absolutely. Um, I was just talking about this the other day and you know, the guy that I'm talking to, he actually brought up just looking at the toys that children play with. Boy toys deal with violence, um, cars, you know, stuff like that. Like boys grow up thinking about other things, whereas girls grow up thinking about being homemakers. You know, Susie Easy Bake Oven and baby dolls and babies and changing diapers. Like this is what gir women girls grow up thinking about, whereas the guys don't think about family and marriage. You know what I'm trying to say? So Absolutely. it's much more natural for him to go out and spread his seed. Yeah, <laughs> whereas women, we are taught to go straight into monogamy and just be loyal to, you know, the guys why girls grow up wanting to get married, dreaming about their wedding day, whereas boys, they just want to, you know, they want to hoe around. For a, yeah. for a while, you know, and then we got to sit here and wait for them to be done hoeing around and accept that. And we just got to be with them. We cannot, you know, we can't explore our sexuality in any kind of way. Yeah. And it's ridiculous because you hear so many women all the time say, I couldn't imagine being with more than one man. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And it's like, have you ever really truly, without judging yourself, without guilt mm -hmm. or shame, allowed mm -hmm. yourself to explore the idea. Right. So many women don't even let themselves even think about it because it makes them feel guilty. Right, right, right. It's, it's all what we've been programmed to think from young childhood, media, TV, everything, you know? Yeah. So we gotta get, you know, we gotta get into your dating life. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta, get, into, okay. we gotta get into your world. I knew I knew you was gonna come come with me. Come um, come for me. <laughs> I wanna I wanna jump straight in. I want I wanna I wanna be in your world for a moment. Can I? <laughs> sure. I'm okay. an open book. Okay, I'm an open book. Told me some stories, and you already know we gotta talk about that. Right. But yes. <laughs> dating, finding the right men. Men being open, losers, weirdos, people being deceptive. What has your experience been overall when it comes to your polyandrous dating or looking for the men to build your queendom? It has been all of that. It has been <laughs> tough. <laughs> it has been tough. And that's pretty much what I... Uh, tell people who are coming into the journey and trying to live it, that it is something that requires a lot of patience mm. and persistence. If you truly feel that this is for you, then you won't rush it and you won't go back to monogamy if it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because relationships, you know, they may not work out. Disappointments happen. You know, all that happens. It's, it's the journey, right? So when it comes to me, I have been, uh, I would say, actively pursuing a polyandrous relationship for about three years or so. Mm -hmm. um, 
before that, I was kind of just chilling for a while because I had just came out of a relationship. So I was taking a break for about a year. Um, and it has been tough. Mm. It has been very tough. I would so imagine. The guy I was dating, you know, decided, um, you know, he was down for it and he wanted to do it with me. So I started dating um, while being with him. And one of the things that I know a lot of people go through is he will change his mind after a while. So after a while, he said, uh, never mind. I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm like, what happened? Let's talk about this. <laughs> so <laughs> we talked back and forth, back and forth. And he never changed his mind back to original, you know, his original statement. So mm -hmm. basically, you know, we had to break up. Oh. And so, <laughs> and I was, I was with him for about three years. So, so yeah, that was tough. Um, and also since I was out in New York, the mentalities of the men in New York are, I would say, close minded, um, very dominating, possessive. Um, they think they got it all together, you know, oh, so Lord. I did a lot of my uh, searching for men online and uh, long distance, you know, establishing long distance relationships. Yeah. Which was also hard because I am a touchy person. I like to, I like to be in close proximity with my partner. I like to live with them. Yeah. I like to cook with them, massage them. I like all that stuff. So. You know, just having men long distance is like, uh, you know, you got to be extra cautious. You don't know if they're weird, anything, right? So yeah. it's just, it's a, it's a long road. I am talking to, I would have to say, I have two boyfriends that are long distance. Um, and I am talking to someone new who surprised me. And he is in New York and not that far from me, I might add. <laughs> So, yes, I am talking to someone new, but I was like, well, where were you when I was looking for all these? What happened? Where were you? Exactly. <laughs> and he, was like, like, he was like, I was looking for about three years. I'm like, so, hello, where were you? And he was like, oh, I just wasn't on Facebook. Wow. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's well, here now. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm good. Yes. <laughs> So listen, yeah. is it a thing like where, like, do you hear from other polyandrous women that men back out a lot when it comes yes. to committing to a polyandrous lifestyle? Yes. Yes. Especially, especially when it comes to what, what I like to call first husband syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. The guy that you're with, or you start out with, say a lot of women realize that, you know what, I'm just going to start living my life, um, you know how I always wanted to, but was too afraid. And now I'm having the courage to live my life. Mm -hmm. Usually when they have that notion, it's within a relationship already. So mm -hmm. basically if you're starting off monogamously and you guys talk about opening up your relationship to add in partners, the first thing the guy is gonna think is, oh, you know, is it gonna be a girl? And once she says no, he's shut down, you know? And then he's like, okay, sure fine and then he's with it for a little while and then he kind of backs out you know and the reason why he backs out is because he he's having an internal battle within himself of what he deems to be masculine oh. you know um how he'll be perceived by society he doesn't realize this but this is a subconscious battle that happens and i watched it in you know, my boyfriend when he was going through it. So he, there was times where he would be like, yeah. And then he'll be like, no. And then he'll be like, okay. And then he'll be like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And I understand, you know, I study psychology. I do a lot of social, um, psychosocial experiments. You know, I like picking at the human brain. So now you're experimenting yeah. on these men? <laughs> 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 on these Poor men, you out here. They're not poor. They're good, okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay. What? Whenever somebody's with me, they're going to develop, you know, um, yes. cognitively. So when you come to me, 
I can basically read you. I can read what you struggle with and I'm here to help you with that. Mm. So if I see that you're fighting me on what I'm trying to help you with, I can see what's happening. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, so yes. it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, you know, psycho-spiritual development that goes into being in a polyandrous relationship. And what happens is a lot of men don't want to change. A lot of men are mm. complacent. They're content with who they are. They don't want to change. They think they got it all together. So that's what happens, you know? Yes. And yeah, you do see that a lot. Like a lot of men want, one of the things that irritates me is when they know what the problem is, but they're like, oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm good. It's like, how can you know the issues that you have, but not want to grow past that? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's, it's just um, comfort. You know, everybody mm -hmm. likes to be in that comfort zone. No one likes to step into the unknown, especially if you know how others will perceive you. That will definitely keep you in your comfort zone. Like, you know what? No, I'm good. I'm not trying to be out here looking crazy. You know what I'm trying to say? And that yeah. will make them make a decision. Even if they may have a small percentage of being open to it, they're not even going to try because of how society will perceive. They don't want to be looked at as gay. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. A lot of, yeah. Our, our men are traumatized. <laughs> our men are definitely, traumatized. definitely. Yeah. So my thing is, do you feel like you're able to find, first of all, because the chat wants to know this, are you open to dating bisexual men or what, what is your stance on oh, that? My preference. Yeah. Okay. Well, my, my personal preference are straight men, mm -hmm. straight men. I would like all the attention to be on me. Yes. Okay. Just I love on me. That. <laughs> <laughs> on me. We got to, you know, you got to work together to make sure I'm satisfied because, you know, not to, you know, down anyone or demean anyone I've ever been with before, but I have been unsatisfied a long time. So what? I kind of need people to work together, you know, to, you know, get the job done. <laughs> yes. And that is something that we don't talk about a lot. We don't talk about how our ladies are out here not satisfied at all sexually within their relationships. Like a lot of us have just accepted mm -hmm. it. Like, okay, this is what it is. I, I'm not going to be coming with my partner. That's going to be something I do on my own, if possible. Like a lot of us ladies are accepting dynamics where the sex is mediocre. It's not so Right, well, I thought that. I definitely thought that I was there. I accepted. I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal, especially because not only because I don't um, I don't put sex at the height of priority in my relationships. So mm -hmm. just because I love somebody, I love them hard. I think about how we grow together and so much other things. So when it comes to sex, I look at it as just like, you know, a cherry on top of a sundae. So, you know, that's why I never made it a big deal. And I'm yeah. like, well, we have so much other things going on. It's okay. It's fine. And then I'm just like, oh, this is getting annoying now. I'm like 31. Like, <laughs> like come on. Like, <laughs> this, this is not a game. <laughs> yeah, it has to be something more. It has to be more to life. Like, this is not. Right, right. And, and I looked at it like, you know, you know, no one's perfect, right? So my thing is, I'm already... Um, accepting flaws and whoever I'm dealing with anyway. So yeah. my thing is, if I'm going to be accepting flaws anyway, does sex have to be one of them? You know, can we work on them? If you don't want to work on that, are you open to help? Yeah, like it yeah. has to be a team effort. Like if, yeah. if, if one yeah. man can't do the job, I mean, hello. And, right, yeah. right. You know, and and you notice. I'm not sure if you notice, but every man that's something different, something that's unique to him, you know, and it feels different to you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I may like getting my neck kissed on, but I may only like it done by this particular person, yeah. you know, and I don't want to be with one man. And now I am restricted to only his special, you know, techniques. Yes. Only his style. Only his style, you know, and men become complacent. I've been with men for years and you know they have their way of doing it yeah that's true that's true and like 
one of the things that always, always, and I think I told you this, like blows me is the whole myth of the male insatiable libido. It's like, where? Yeah. Where? That's, that's why I want to know, where is it? Because I have not seen it. I haven't heard yeah. from it. It hasn't called me. It hasn't texted me. Where is it at? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess in, in certain situations with certain people, of course, the, you know, if a man has a high sex drive and he meets a woman with a low sex drive, he'll, that idea will be ingrained in his head. Of course, mm. that makes sense. But if you really think about it, what women hit their sexual peak, you know, in their, you know, their mid forties, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And that's when men start to decline in their libido. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we kind of need to figure out how to fix that. You know what I'm trying to say? Exactly. Definitely. And I date older men. I date older men. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, together. they, they I, I don't want to, I am getting like, older and I get older like, women, so it kind of makes sense. I don't yeah. want to tire one out, you know? <laughs> you might put them <laughs> in the hospital or so put them out of commission for good. Yeah, like, honestly, that's, like, the, it's the worst thing, though, you know, like, so say your guy goes to work, you make him dinner, he feels good, but he goes straight to sleep, and you're, like, yeah. just radiating in hormones, like, I he's know. tired, you you can't, like, bother him about it, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, you feel guilty even doing that, you're like, okay, I don't yeah. think right, because he, he has yeah. been working, he has been being productive, but damn! I'm steaming over here. See, see, that's why it's important to have a brother. He may have a different, he may have a different shift. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There you go. So that when you're tired, he's you can out. sleep, and I won't bother you. Because trust me, I've thrown a couple temper tantrums. Yeah, you're not the only one. I mean, you're not the only one. So here's my thing. I gotta ask you this: When have you felt like through your journey? Mm -hmm. most sexually satisfied like best experiences best moments best relationships like when you don't gotta put nobody's name out there but i want to know best sexually mm -hmm. satisfied yes um oh my god stop <laughs> i'm joking what are you doing I'm that joking, was the I'm most joking. pregnant pause. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Like, what are you? What are you doing right now? I'm joking. I'm really trying to think. No, no, for real. Stop it. No one ever asked me that before, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> it would have to be an ex, of course. Like, mm -hmm. you know, any. I think. I think I've had a great moment with each of my exes you know what i'm yeah. trying to say i would have to say each ex has a moment where they completely just went overboard and surprised me and i was super satisfied you know i will always remember this time where i think one of my exes um i think i was young i was like 20 or something like that and yeah i think we had sex for about like six hours oh my god girl what yeah you burnt hella calories like I cannot. I would be dead. I remember. I, I remember dead. because I had a blonde weave. Oh, and, um, it's <laughs> always when you get in your bag. Like when you get in your bag, you have the best experience. When you're feeling right. blonde, you do something different. Yeah, I had I had a blonde weave, and I remember like whoa, like I didn't realize that it was so long until it was like getting light outside. It went from nighttime to getting light outside and it was like full blown day when we were done. And I'm like, I went to the bathroom and I saw my skin. I was glowing. I was like, whoo. Wow. Fun. <laughs> Listen, okay. So, you know, we got to get into the bad experiences because yeah. you let, you know, you have not been able to consummate your full poly Andrus sexual fantasies. Can right. You tell the people why. Tell the people why. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell them. Tell them. So the one thing I haven't had is as long as I've been poly, the one thing I haven't had is a threesome with two men, a successful threesome with two men. Um, every time I try for some reason, one guy can't perform. Um, you know, I guess 
I could just let y'all know the story now. Yes, drop it because this I, one had me falling out of my seat. So <laughs> go, go ahead and tell us. So know. The, like it's always the same thing though. It's always the same thing though. I'm I'm in college, and you know I'm seeing this guy, and he just comes to me. And he's like, oh, you know, would you like us to add a friend? I'm like okay sure i don't know his friend i don't know his name he brings him into the dorm room and i'm like oh he's cute okay sure whatever i'm free you know i'm free i just yeah you know you're, you're okay, like, let's hey. do this let's yeah. do this and then <laughs> we start and it's like the guy that i have been seeing and talking to the one that i know that we're comfortable with you know and yeah. he's like not getting hard like uh. struggling and I'm like, I, I don't know. And I'm thinking, I hope it's not because his friend is large. Like the guy that I was talking to was about mm -hmm. six, six and a half mm -hmm. um, inches. And his friend was large. His friend was shorter. Mm -hmm. But he was packing a little bit more than it counts. Yeah, it surprised me when he took his pants off. I thought he would have been like, you know, yeah. an average seven or so, but he was he was pretty large, wow. you know? And you know, once I notice that the guy that I like is having troubles, I'm not going to continue with his friend. So I just tell him it's okay. We could, we don't have to, you know, do anything. It's all right. So his friend leaves, and it's just like I have to try my best to sit there and talk with him and console him and things like that. Oh um, wow! Yeah. So he needed to be consoled in that moment. You could tell yeah because i know it's embarrassing like you invite your friend this is your idea and then your friend get here like i know later on y'all gonna talk about that and your friend probably gonna be mad at you like yo bro like what happened like i was in it <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know, kind of like they were having it. that conversation yeah he like kind of ruined the situation for his friend yes exactly so that's why i had to talk to him and be like you know i'm not sure what's wrong like it's me and you, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm still here, you know, yeah. is everything okay? All that stuff. So yeah, I don't Did know what happened. Open up like about any insecurities that he had or anything. No. Oh, he didn't <laughs> no. He's just, I'm good. No. I'm good. No. He's like, he's like, he's like, don't worry about it. I don't I don't know what happened, but don't worry about it. I'm like, are you sure? Someone says in the chat, goddess, you should have kept on going with his friend, LOL. <laughs> that was very gracious I mean, of you to not do so. Right. I mean, I that's the thing. That's why I said I don't put sex at the height of, you know, my priorities. So I'm, I'm more emotional. Mm. So that's why I was so ready to accept a life of just, you know, having sex, but not, I never thought about my satisfaction. I never thought that that was um, a necessity. Like I thought sex was um, just, um, I thought it was something just for the guy to show me that he cared about me. And then uh -huh. once he, once he nutted, I did my job. That's yeah. how I thought about sex. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I that's why, you awesome. know, if it doesn't work for him, then I'm worried. I'm upset. You know, I never looked at sex mm -hmm. for my benefit. Oh, wow. And I think a lot of women definitely, I had similar feelings about sex when I first became sexually active. I was like, okay, this is more so like something that I perform, something that I do as a favor, something that I, this is about him. This is his time to shine. I'm just absolutely, surprised. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that people don't think about what about having to be emotionally supportive to multiple men is that difficult because we don't really think about men's emotional needs a lot mm -hmm. yeah that's to me that's not difficult um most times i'm begging men to open up to me i am i tend to be that therapist in a sense so you know i'm i'm that person who can help you with anything so i want them to come and open up to me so i can help you with whatever anxieties you may be having whatever you may be going through depressant de depression um you know stress whatever like i'm that piece 
that's something that I always took pride in, that I've always been a man's piece. So I want them to come and open up to me and I'm there for you with whatever you need. So, you know, it only becomes an issue when they don't want to open up to me. But uh -huh. so yeah, basically you're saying you have a lot of love and understanding to give. Like you're very receptive when it comes to men's emotions. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, me wanting a polyandry is basically um, one of the reasons is because I feel like our men need healing. And yes. something that I do naturally is I heal any man that I'm in a relationship with. He becomes better. Yes. So, so I like, need to spread that. I need to be able to help multiple men become better, you know, and build something from that. Yeah. Like you don't want to limit yourself to only healing that one guy. Right. Absolutely. So let's talk about the cum shot from hell. <laughs> we have to talk about the cum shot from hell. Come on. Get, get right. Okay. Her. So yes, my second uh, attempt at having a threesome with two guys. Again, it was it started off the same way. You know, I had a friend who I was very close with. We hung out all the time. We were so comfortable with each other. We watched porn together, all that stuff. And he came up with the idea and said, um, you know, my brother is coming home from college. You know, do you mind if we all, you know, have a little rendezvous? And I'm like sure great yeah no problem because you know i see his brother they look alike they both cute fine great you know his brother comes and you know we start things you know well first of all the reason why i like them is because they both sing very well mm -hmm. and i love a man who can sing and serenade me Sexy. <laughs> yeah so they sung to me you know we had music and all that other stuff it was really really nice and you know we start you know getting it together getting it popping and my friend my guy was having troubles getting hard again again <laughs> okay and, and and this time there's no this time there's no size difference they were like around the same size you know they're related it was his idea so this time i can't i couldn't really figure out what the issue was yeah um so but we me and him never had sex though we never had sexual intercourse so maybe he was just nervous i'm not sure ah so this was your first time you know, being with him as well just in general right just in general we never had sex before but he definitely ate me out a couple times you know how was that um i i was i was his teacher he, oh, okay. he asked me to teach him. So that's that's what that was. <laughs> oh, so he was getting there. He was coming along. Yeah, he was, he was coming along. Okay, okay. Yeah. So basically, um, you know, we start, of course, the, fir the first person to get hard is the first person to enter. Okay. Enter through oh, the gates of heaven. That's what I call it. Is that the rules? Huh? Is that the rule? That's, that's my rule. <laughs> okay. I think that's fair. I think it's a fair rule. That's that's my rule. If you get hard first, you enter first. You know, yeah. if you, you enter the gates of heaven. That's what yeah. I call it. Yes. So the brother gets hard first, you mm -hmm. know, he starts, it feels nice. You know, I'm also trying to give head as well. Mm -hmm. I multitask, that's what I do. Exactly. And um, you know, he still is not working, but you know, he gets like semi hard. So I'm like, you know what? As long as you're semi hard, I'm a switch and you're gonna, you know, enter, we're gonna you know, do what you do. You gotta get in. Yes. Okay. So he goes in, right? Mm -hmm. And then he holds. And he stops. And I'm like, what? What's what's wrong? He's like, I'm about to come. And I'm like, no, you're not. You just got you just got in there. No, you're not. And he's like, Yeah, I am. And I'm like, No, you're not. You're you're retarded. Just just hold it. Just relax. Relax. Breathe. Breathe. Yeah. And then he pulls out and he holds it like real tight. And then next thing you know, he comes all up on his chin and face and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like I can't like like a rocket exploding like an <laughs> exploding volcano. And I can't. Like, I can't. That was the craziest moment i've ever experienced because i've never seen a man come like that and i've never seen a man come on his own face 
I, you know, <laughs> that is one thing that I have not experienced. See a man come into his own face, give himself a facial, and I mean, I'm sure that it was a memorable experience to say the least. Okay. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It was just like I was in shock. I was in awe. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you can't help but start laughing. You can't help but start laughing. I have to ask him if he's okay. Are oh, you okay? Check on first before you had to die laughing because I don't think I would have been able to check. I would have been like, get out. <laughs> I would have kicked him out the building. I would have no, kicked him out the building. Okay, you yeah. know, and he was just like embarrassed, but it was like he had a smirk on his face. So we all started laughing. Yeah. But it was just like, bro, you just got in there. Mm, Come right. on, man. He was in and out. He was in and out. In and out. <laughs> in and out. <laughs> Somebody wanted to know. To the stroke, like, just enter and hold. That's it. Yeah, just enter and hold so you can yeah. keep it together. Yeah. So someone in the chat asked, so was the sex over or did you keep going with the other guy? I did the same thing. I stopped. I didn't. I, 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 I love you. over here. <laughs> oh, my God. Over here. You got to remember because the one that can't perform is always the one that that's the closest to me. I never know the other guy. So it would feel <laughs> so weird. You know, it feel weird me having sex in front of you know the other guy. Like I really don't know them like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like you just want to reassure your guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, he was he was really a good friend of mine, so I wasn't gonna just do that in front of his face. You know what I'm trying to say? So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I felt really, I felt really bad. I felt really bad. You know, despite how I personally felt. Like, of course, I I wasn't satisfied at all, but. I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Like I said, I didn't think about sex for me. Yeah. You so. wanted to comfort him. Right. So if that same thing were to happen today, do you think you would have handled it the same? Nah. <laughs> I love it. Keep it G. Keep it G. Keep it G. I'm, you got to be a big I'm, boy. I'm in, a I'm in a different space and I have a different understanding of um, you know, orgasms and, you know, female sexuality. So it's, it, I have a whole different understanding. So I wouldn't sit there and focus on their pleasure and not mine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that. I love that attitude. So, <laughs> wait, I'm being for real. Let's go through the chat really quick and see, because we have been getting mm -hmm. a lot of comments. So let's yeah. see what people have been I saying. I can even see the chat. <laughs> I think they say if you click the comments, do you see a button that says comments? I think someone said if you click it, you can see it. So let's see. Let's go down some. Someone says, oh, how okay, do you see find? It. You see it now? Yeah. So some of them were from before you came in. But someone says, how do you even approach the type of guys that will be open to polyandry like how do you find them i think you said something about like being online like is it hard um i would say it's kind of like finding a needle in the haystack not so much men who are open to polyandry because it seems to be um catching on the mentality seems to be catching on but mm -hmm. um polyandrous men that fit my criteria that i like yeah so my criteria is it's a little bit more intricate to where it makes it harder for me because mm. I have to be attracted to them. We have to be mentally, emotionally, and spiritually compatible in every way because, you know, we, I'm trying to make sure that this is something that lasts until, you know, the end of time. I'm not trying to just, you know, get in, get out. I don't like a bunch of people coming in and out of my life. So if you're going to come in, I need to make sure you're going to stay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So wait, let's see what else we have here. Someone says, mm, someone said polygynous people tend to be elitist, which is sad. Do you believe that? Yeah. yeah. That happens. Around? That happens. <laughs> yeah. Someone says there are so many benefits to polyandrous relationships in our black community. I definitely agree. <laughs> Some okay, now here we got the stupidity. Someone says, if you were messing with me, 
I would beat it up. How are you going to deal with another guy after I put the hurts on that thing? Yeah, I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. You know? Very eloquent, and, um, right? Yeah, I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. And I would like for people to know that I'm in New York and um, there are a lot of beautiful men here, mm. a lot of strong men, well endowed men. Let's go. They all have their beautiful style. I'm not Let's saying go. that, you know, one man is like, he can't make me tired. Okay. I can be tired. Yeah. But will I be fulfilled? It's, 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 it's different. Will I be fulfilled? You know, yeah. like you may do this very well, but can you do everything? Mm, I'm going to have to say in most cases, probably not. <laughs> no, they can't. I'm going to just have to say but it. But the confidence is cute. The confidence <laughs> is cute. We're supposed to have that cute bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let's see. Someone said, if you want two men or more, do you still feel like you have to contribute financially equally, like 30%? Um, no. Basically, what I contribute to the <laughs> what I contribute to the relationship and to these men far outweighs financial um, you know, monetary gain. Yes. You know what I'm trying to say? Because at the end of the day, the money that we make is only a tool that we use to get what we need um, as far as freedom is concerned, liberties, autonomy, all that stuff that we want in life. We are only using money for that reason. I think a lot of times we forget why we go out and get money. Mm -hmm. um, the whole purpose of you know, being with me or anyone who decides to be in my life, they will understand the importance of all the other values outside of money. Yes. And then once we get to a point where we're, we no longer need money, we won't use it. Exactly. Well said. You know what is crazy to me? When it's some guy like trying to be polygynous and he's like, yeah, for financial freedom, come here, come be with me and fuck me and pay 33%. Like, um, I'm good. Yeah. Like, like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That to me, once, once people look at women um, like I understand the whole new age, uh, perspective about 50, 50 a woman should be able to take care of herself. Yes, she can. And she should be able to, but at the end of the day, when it comes to a relationship, a woman, you know, she provides so much more, whereas you are supposed to be her provider. You are supposed to be her protector. You know, yes. she can't do your job and her job. Her job is to make sure she elevates you in consciousness, awareness, everything. So she's supposed to also, you know, produce children, raise them to yeah. be, you know, at the optimal health and everything. So there's so much more that a woman does than just going out to work. What, what happens is when a woman goes to work and she's depleting her energy going to work, she's less of herself for you. So when you want her to be your piece after you had a stressful day, she can't do that because she had a stressful day. Yep. That's so true. And that's something that's not understood. Those great points. Let's you know, see. and then y'all both get home and y'all can't help y'all kid with their homework because y'all tired. Yeah. And the kids just, they're like, what's good? Mom, dad, <laughs> nobody's available. Let's see right. what, what else we have. Someone said, how many children would you be willing to have from men? Like, first of all, how many men do you want to have? What's your ideal dynamic? Um, dream, dream I big, am looking, I'm looking to have about four to six. Woo! And I would love if I can have children from all of them. Oh my so God, I am looking at genetics when I'm, when I'm dating. <laughs> that, yeah, that's why it's also kind of hard. You know, I'm looking at yeah. your mental capacity. Because okay, stuff go. like that passes on to the children. It I'm does. looking at your genetics. I'm looking at the children you may have. Your mother, mm -hmm. your sister, your brother, your auntie, your uncle. I'm looking at your whole family. So yeah. I'm looking at everything. Yeah, because we need to know what we're going to get. We can't just be jumping in blind. <laughs> Let's see. Someone says, oh, more sexism. Can you curse this person out really quick? Someone says, but no man would want a woman getting around. Let him know, please. Go ahead. I don't have time for it. I don't got time for them neither. Pass. <laughs> Ignore Pass. them. <laughs> okay. 
so let's see um if we have any more questions here mm -hmm. more okay here because we got some misconceptions that we're definitely gonna have to clear up someone says if these guys lived close i guess they were talking about your long distance loves Mm -hmm. I don't believe they would go for that. I believe they have to live at a distance. And that sounds ridiculous. Most times when it comes to talking to people about this, especially in Facebook groups, um, I ignore a lot of people because yeah. it's like they don't even hear themselves when they speak. Yeah. At all. Yeah. You know, honestly, what I think is a lot of people don't even take the time to educate themselves on the dynamic in itself. Like polyandry is just as old as polygyny, okay? Yeah. Polygamy is an ancient practice that all melanated people practice before monogamy became the norm, which Europeans brought that mindset to every country that they colonized. Yeah. So, you know, polyandry was right there. So for people to look at polygyny as up here and, and polyandry is down here or that shouldn't happen at all is mm -hmm. like really retarded. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. And, and I'm so glad that I have you here because I see mm -hmm. so much ignorance when it comes to polyandry, even in poly groups. And, and that's crazy to me. And right. I just want to have like this build, like as a reference, like, okay, I see somebody <laughs> say some dumb shit. Check out this. That's it. I, I, I'm not going to talk right. to you. I'm not going to just check it out because you're right. A lot of people do not take the time to educate themselves. They want you to educate them like every step of the way, every time. And it's like, people don't have time for that. But I definitely, definitely think there does need to be a lot more visibility for polyandrous mm -hmm. people, period. There has to be. Right, right, right. Absolutely. That's, that's pretty much why I made the page. Yes. I made the page because of all the ignorance mm -hmm. and also misconceptions everything you know and also representation so on my page i give education with sources yes. so yes. you look it up stuff. Mm -hmm. and i also i make sure that i interview people and i ask them is it okay if i can share their picture so every picture that you have up there that you see up there of real mm -hmm. polyandrous families i've gotten their permission to post them and this is real and authentic so yes. i'm not just throwing up things that are fake i do have some memes which is, of course, funny, but yeah. you know, the real people are there and they're tagged. So you know that it's really happening. It's not something made up and yeah. they don't have to be at a long distance for it to work. They don't have to be Bullshit. bisexual for it to work. Bullshit. Like all of these things, I don't even know where they get these ideas from. Yes, I don't either. And like, I'm so happy that you're doing what you're doing because a lot of people do think that polyandry is a myth. They do not believe that it truly exists in the real world. They're like, no, that sounds, nah, that, that doesn't sound. Yes, it totally happens. It's totally <laughs> real. And not only that, but there are men who are happy in these situations and this is what they want. Absolutely, absolutely. Questions. Okay, no more ignorance. <laughs> We've had enough ignorance for the night, I think. <laughs> let's see i mean that's why i'm here i'm here to clear up the misconceptions um i'm kind of used yes. to it doesn't really bother me it's okay like i laugh i laugh at it um what bothers me though is when you tell them the truth and they reject it so they have like cognitive dissonance and they're just like oh no like a woman posted her um her husband and her boyfriend and they have a beautiful family and people are in the comments like oh are they bisexual are they gay and she's like no they're not mm -hmm. and they're like yeah whatever they're gay like what do you mean you yeah, asked how you answered and now you're not so the, yeah and, and that's crazy because we do know that there are many polygynous relationships where the women are not bisexual and are not involved sexually so it's like exactly exactly that exactly so like exactly. what i want you to put out there i want us to do a little manifesting mm -hmm. and i want you to put out there what are the kind of men that you want like you want to draw to yourself like i know you have your guys that you're mm -hmm. doing now but that's mm -hmm. only three baby we got to build up to six so let's go <laughs> like let's put these qualities out here and let's manifest them okay so what are you looking for in men well, they definitely have to be uh, conscious mm. and not not just conscious, but spiritually enlightened. They have to 
um, go through life humble, knowing that they're always a student and they don't ever know everything. Yes. So that's the kind of mentality that I'm looking for. I'm also looking for um, men who can be emotionally present, emotionally mature, and also men who are strong. And I mean that in almost every way basically mentally, emotionally, and physically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do want men that are taller than me. You know, <laughs> Wait, how tall are you? I'm, I'm like five, five and a half. Oh, you can, girl, you could get that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of I kind of like I'm six feet. Oh, six feet <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, we're I like to be picked up, you know, I we're like to be picked up. Me up. <laughs> yeah, we can have whatever we want. We're manifesting here, okay? Yeah, so, you know, six feet you know black attractive of course attractive i mean sub attractive is subjective but i like i like a little scruff if i'm throwing out some images think about the game oh he's hot you know the game's hot throw it out there um yeah just definitely smart intelligent um they can be I either a gemini uh Sagittarius, Aquarius, or Leo. Okay. Okay. No, no, no Virgos, no caps. Not invited. <laughs> I, Not invited. I already have a Virgo and a cap, so I don't need no more of those. <laughs> okay, okay. I gotta, okay. Even, I gotta even out my my environment, you know? I gotta yes. even it out, I mean, you know. It's only right. Yeah. So yeah, you know, and if they are um if they have children, I would like for them to be responsible and be in their children's lives. I definitely check that immediately. The first thing I ask is, do you have children? Um, if they say yes, how's your relationship with your children? How's your relationship with your baby mother? I need to know that you are mature. I need to know that you're responsible and I need to know that you will be a great father because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for fathers for my future children. I'm not just looking to, you know, just get laid. You know, because I was I was talking to another uh, guy, polygynous guy, and he was like, "Oh, you just want, you just want twelve dicks, huh?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> that's not what this is about. <laughs> like, that's that's a perk. Like, like that's a perk, but it's not. Come on, stop reducing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, listen, let me tell you this. I cannot wait until you guys are all settled, and mm -hmm. I just see you bust out. I want to see them photos. <laughs> I want to see them photos. I can't wait to oh, see you bust out with three on the right and three on the left. That That is going to be groundbreaking. And I think you know that. And yeah, I'm, I know. I know. I'm so, so <laughs> excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I know it's coming. I know 2020. You can't wait. Hit. What do you think I feel? I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Like, I'm going to like that 50 times. I'm, I'm going to repost that 100 times. Yeah, so, you know, definitely I'm going to try and uh, I definitely have to show my life, you know, yes. I'm trying to say just to be that person that gives the representation because there's a lot of people who feel like they can't. There's a lot of women who listen to all the ignorance, you know what I'm trying to say, and they feel like it's impossible or they're not supposed to or it's not natural, you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? So, you know, there's people who are living it and but not everyone is equipped to be on the forefront of a movement. So, yes. you know, I definitely have to show my life to show others that it's okay. This is normal. This is a thing. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, this is an ancient practice. This is you coming into your own um, royalty of who you are. You know yes. what I'm trying to say? You're, you're basically walking in, into your divinity in life. You're not um, settling for what someone told you you have to do or how you have to live your life. So, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely um, can't wait for, you know, my men to just come to me. Come on now. Which I'm very excited. I, I can feel them. I can feel them coming. I can feel them coming yeah. to mama. So we have one Absolutely. more good question from the chat mm -hmm. that I think is really good. Someone says, what has been your greatest moment of your polyandrous journey? and mm -hmm. the worst moment so far of your polyandrous. Let's start with bad and end doing good. <laughs> okay, my worst moment, I would have to say is, um, 
just the process of having to help the men deprogram because then I go um I go through the process of having to help them have the right perspective. Yes. So they'll have insecurities, jealousy, fights, you know, um, you know, men acting like they hate each other, but they don't even know each other. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so that I think that was uh, my worst experience. And to my best, I would have to say is, hmm. I would have to say uh, this year, uh, Valentine's Day, I basically had uh, both of my guys who were long distance visit me in the same month. Nice. Yeah. So that was great. You know, I went to a spa, went to the movies. You know, I got to, you know, cook one of them dinner. You know, we went out to eat. It was, it was great. And you could just feel like, okay, this is how things are supposed to be like this is how it is it's, 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 it's the getting interest. there it's getting there they came on different weekends one came uh one weekend one came the next weekend mm -hmm. but just to have them both there in the same month was um you know progress you know mm -hmm. yes. my next thing i'm looking to hopefully get people to actually relocate because i've been definitely talking to them for one of them for two years the other one for a year and a half so it's been a long time you know yeah. Yeah, and I definitely like see it all coming together. Like one thing that I have to say about you is I love, like you're definitely very, very self-assured. You know what you want, but I see like a lot of selflessness in what you're doing. And I, and I love that. And, and I think that that's something that a lot of people wouldn't expect from someone who wants to be polyandrous or someone who is polyandrous. They think, oh, it's right. all about just me, me, me. Like I definitely right. love the emphasis on healing, on consciousness, on all these things. Mm -hmm. And you're an amazing person and you definitely, definitely deserve to have what you want. And I know you're going to have it. Right, absolutely. It's, it's already in the making. It's already happening, you know. Yes, I'm just sitting yes. here waiting for it all to come, yes, you know. And I'm enjoying the journey because the journey is just as um, important as the destination. Yes, it is. It definitely is. And I know people are excited to hear from the men. That's when we're going to really get crazy. Right. Absolutely. Have absolutely. In the chat, but, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to ride high. And <laughs> yes, like, oh, this conversation has been so dope. I cannot, we have been talking for a long time. So it's almost time for me to go to bed, but I want you to tell right. people like what they can look forward to from you and like where they can follow you and everything. Cause you're so dope. Yes. So basically, um, you can basically follow me on all my social media platforms. Um, I run a blog, which is basically this name right here, Goddess Pretty Akasha. And on there, you will find a bunch of polyandry information, which is also what I share on my Instagram, but it's kind of compacted with just reading material. So if you want to follow me on my uh, Instagram, it's Black Polyandry. You know how to spell it, B-L-A-C-K-P-O-L-Y-A-N-D-R-Y. And on there, um, I definitely do lives. I do question and answers. You guys can, uh, you know, hit me in the DMs. I do polyandrous coaching if you are um, on the journey. Um, I don't charge you because I do this for you. And you can just come in my inbox and I'm there for whatever issues you may be having, questions answers advice whatever and you know i am writing a book oh. i did share uh, tonight about my personal experience but i'm writing a book on everything on my page you won't necessarily see too much of my personal experience because i made that page simply for the community so that page is for you um and if you want to know more about me um look for my book. And once I get all my men together, I will be going live a lot more often. We'll have a YouTube page and everything else. So I'm working on a lot more projects, but I can, I have to keep them under wraps for now. <laughs> I'm going to be calling you girl because you, you know, you got to tell me. Right. But yes. Like I have had so much fun. I'm so excited. And you know, mm -hmm. you back by yourself, of course, but yeah. We got to do that woman's panel. Yes, of course. Because your perspective is needed for sure. Yeah, I know. 
that's that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to enlighten, you know, yes. expand some perspectives. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> One person at a time. That's all we can do. One person at a time. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Akasha, for coming live with me. Ah. Of course, you know, anytime, you know, you know, I love you. And you I know, and you. I love the people. So, you know, you can have me back anytime. Just text me, let me know. I'm here. Okay. I'll text you. All right, then. You have a good night. Bye, y'all. You too. <laughs>